what is the difference between machine learning and AI? If it's written in Python, in code, it's probably machine learning. If it's written in PowerPoint, just like here, it's probably AI. But why is this distinction important? In very early days of Lupa Search, we had one client that we really, really wanted to sign. But he was constantly asking us, do you support AI? Does your service support AI? And we would naturally ask back, but what kind of features would you like to have? Is it uh, machine learning based search ranking, search by voice or by image? And he would just say, I don't care. I just want to have, I just want for you to support the AI so I could have somewhere in my landing page a buzzword that would say AI powered technology, which is fine. If the word AI sells, so be it. But why do people think like that? When we think of AI, what first comes to mind is all of the greatest achievements of technology world today. But most of those breakthroughs are actually done not by AI, but by machine learning, which is only a small part, a subset of AI. And the definition of AI itself is pretty broad. It's basically any technology that can simulate complex human behavior. And for this reason, we have a lot of technologies nowadays that only claim that they are AI, but in reality are not that smart. In late 90s and early 2000s, in Lithuania, we had a surplus of people with a word manager somewhere in their title. Everyone was a manager. And the title kind of lost its meaning. And in my opinion, very similar things are starting to the word AI, starting to happen to the word AI. Paraphrasing one popular cartoon, if everything claims to be AI, then nothing actually is. For these reasons, uh, my purpose today is to inspire you to be conscious when using AI in e-commerce search. And to do that, I'm going to talk about three biggest lies of AI in e-commerce search. Which will be, lie number one is that machine learning is a must if you want to have a great e-commerce search. Line number two is that machine learning, machine, uh, machine learning algorithms that are open source, they require little to no configuration to adapt to your data. And the line number three is going to be that small companies cannot leverage the benefits of AI. Let's begin with line number one, which is that machine learning is an absolute must if you want to have great e-commerce search. We all grew up with Google at our fingertips. Everything on the internet is just one quick search query away. Gone are the days when you, to, when you need to browse through the categories, through the folders to find what you're looking for. You can just type in the words and in the next second, get the results. But this behavior kind of spoiled us because now when we go to any e-shop, is it Lithuanian e-shop or any other one, we expect its search to perform just as well as Google, which is unrealistic, right? Google has billions and billions of dollars that they can pour into their machine learning department. And it's partially true, but does it mean that you also need to have a big machine learning department behind your search, behind your product? Certainly not. And to refute that first lie, I'm going to present some examples on how to configure your search using existing technologies. One very important thing is search stemming, which means uh, that user does not need to know the exact name of the word if he wants to find it. So, for, for example, 
it just shortens uh, the word so that the uh, user would find the results, whether he's looking for plural form or not. And it's actually pretty easy to configure if you're already using Elasticsearch. Another thing that comes out of the box from the same Elasticsearch is ability to configure automatic suggestions, just as, just as Google does. It really saves user time and probably a lot of nerves too. Uh, another, maybe even smarter thing you can do is to have something like rules engine. Maybe you are detecting if user search contains certain keywords like cheap phones, the word cheap. If you detect that word, you can automatically sort the search results from cheapest to the most expensive. It will require some configuration, but in reality, it will behave just as well as any AI-based search. Another thing that is very popular is statistical boosting, which, in which you can just track what kinds of products user is interacting with in the search. And then, in the next search, for the same user or for other, you can move those products to the top. And by interacting, I mean maybe he clicks on them, maybe just hovers the mouse or adds uh, directly that item to the cart. And you really do not need a complex AI to achieve that. There are many more other examples of how to make your search better. However, I really want to point out that by using existing technologies that are not AI, we can achieve pretty great results if we configure it and use it to the fullest potential. Line number two is that machine, uh, that most open source machine learning algorithms, they require little to no configuration to adapt to your data. One of the most attractive things about AI is that it claims to completely eliminate the human factor because AI never rests and it never makes the same mistakes as people do, right? The thing is that the AI is as good as the data it was trained on. And the quantity of the data is also very important. I think we all heard that Bing's search quality is a joke compared to Google and uh, that the most popular phrase on Bing is uh, how to find Google. So, uh, yeah, and I really doubt that Microsoft engineers are not as smart as Google's, because I'm sure they're not. It's just that more people are using Google, and they have more data to train their algorithms on. And it results in quite an interesting feedback loop, which constantly makes Google better, and Bing just remains in the margins of internet history. And it's not always about the quantity of the data too. Recently at Lupa Search, we have uh, implemented an algorithm that automatically finds synonyms or similar words to certain phrases. It's based on word to vec technology and is trained on, uh, in our case, it is trained on Lithuanian Wikipedia. It has over 200 of thousands of articles. So how did it perform? It performed perfect on uh, product feeds that had scientific words uh, like uh, uh, author names or uh, geog geographical uh, terms. But when it came to, for example, automotive parts and their jargon, it returned nothing because such words, such synonyms, do not exist on Wikipedia. Maybe we could have just asked a person who actually works with the clients, talks in the jargon, and use that time that we spent training this algorithm just to get that list of the, of the synonyms. And while AI claims to eliminate human bias, it does not always do that. For example, in the very same model, if we type the word exercise in English, uh, I mean in Lithuanian, we get synonyms like military exercise, training, fighting, uh, which 
makes sense because there are a lot of information about battles and war in Wikipedia. But if user is searching for math textbooks and gets uh, a manual about war, he probably would not be very happy about that. I would really like to emphasize that machine learning is great and really interesting and full of potential, but it still requires human configuration and does not completely eliminate the biases that we have. And the line number three is that it is unprofitable for smaller companies to use complex AI algorithms. Okay, so we followed all of the tips in the line number one, made our search great, but we really want to take that further step to improve it further and be better than the competition. Does line number two mean that only the big guys with lots of money can use AI? Well, certainly not. If we use it for the correct purpose that the AI has already proven itself, even small businesses can leverage the power of AI. Let me give you some examples. Maybe you have a large product feed that only contains the images. It might be that you are scraping the data from somewhere else or, or things like that, or just do not have the time to fill the text. What you can do, you can ask AI to generate those captions for you. Just like in this example, I've uploaded these two images and asked AI to generate, to tell me what it is. And it came up with these results. You can either show these results to the user or you can use it to make better search behind the scenes because now your products have more keywords to compare it to. Another thing that is interestingly is already being used in the production for Airbnb users is that maybe you have, you have images, you have names, but when you go to your product page, the description is empty or quite lacking. With the new advances in AI, you can ask it to generate the description for you. In this open AI example, I asked it to generate a listing for a cozy two-room apartment in the center of Vilnius with a view of a river. And it's what, this is what it came up with, the text in the green. It's not the most creative thing. Maybe any student or, 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 or a school children could have come up with it. But it's probably better than to have an empty description in your product page. And you can also use this for search. With the recent news that AI-generated images are winning awards in the art competitions, I think it's not that far away when we can do it other way around. If we give it the description, we can get the images, like in this crayon example. And if you don't look too close to the, what the Kindle is actually displaying, it looks like a pretty, pretty good images. And in some cases, can potentially be used to enrich your product feed to make it look better and more appealing for the user. And of course, everything, all of those models will probably be in English. But you can use the same machine learning based translation tools to convert it to your language. It will not be perfect, just like in this example, but you do not need to always show it to the user. Maybe you just can perform the keyword matching behind the scenes during the process of the search. And actually, talking about this example, it took me, I'm, I think, six tries to find something uh, that would look funny. So this thing is actually getting better. To conclude this point, I would like to say that even small companies can use the power of AI. You can even create your own AI uh, research department. Just keep in mind that it will be costly, it will be, it, you, you will need a lot of resources for that. It is likely it will be a dead end, but if you'll create something with AI, the feeling is pretty great. So 
these were all of the lies that I wanted to tell you today. And since some of these lies are quite prevalent in the industry, I think it's useful to have a very quick recap. We had the lie that machine learning is a must if you want to have a great e-commerce search. But we learned that if we use existing technologies to their fullest potential, to spend some time configuring it, we can have a search that is just as good as AI-based search without all of the issues that AI brings to the table. Also, we heard the lie that most machine learning algorithms that are open source, they are very easy to configure and to adapt to your data. Which is not true because most of the machine learning algorithms, they still require a bit of configuration and is very dependent on the data it was trained on. And you still need to configure and maintain it to check that it does not return weird results. And the line number three was that it is unprofitable for smaller companies to use AI. But I think it is a very important point that even small companies can do that if they use AI for the purposes that it has already proven itself. Today, my goal was to inspire you to be conscious when using AI in e-commerce search or in any other area for that matter. Today, when we think of AI, we are still thinking about all the new breakthroughs that are constantly coming to the news. And they are most often are done by AI, by machine learning. And it's really exciting to have even a very small part of that future somewhere in your product today. Sadly, machine learning, AI, or however you would call it, uh, will not magically make your product better just by sitting somewhere in your landing page, just an abstract phrase. These technologies are just the tools to help you reach your goal. And each tool has its own best way of use. So what is the difference between machine, le machine learning and AI? If it's written Python, it's probably machine learning. And if it's in PowerPoint, it's probably AI. And while this quote quite humorously illustrates the mismatch between AI in real life and AI in marketing, I think that with the new knowledge today, we can all strive for this joke to be finally gone.